MeTV remembers Norman Lear with an All in the Family retrospective, followed by some of his most memorable series. Starting now. From the Mark Taper Forum at the Music Center in Los Angeles, welcome to the 200th episode celebration of All in the Family. Starring Carol O'Connor, Gene Stapleton, Rob Reiner, Sally Struther, and hosted by Norman Lear. Stay with us as Norman Lear discusses one of television's most honored, controversial, and provocative shows with your friends and neighbors, our guests from across the nation, featuring choice moments from 200 episodes of All in the Family. Here are three must-see MeTV episodes coming up this week. Thursday nights at 8, 7 central. Andy is on the hunt for some elderly moonshiners on this memorable episode of Andy Griffith. Friday nights at 9, 8 central. The Clambits and Phil Silvers take a tour of Washington, D.C. on the Beverly Hillbillies. Saturday nights at 8, 7 central. Barbara Stanwyck stars in the William Castle classic, The Night Walker on Sven Gulli. To see the full MeTV schedule, go to MeTV.com today. Need no welfare state. Everybody pulls his weight. Cheer our old LaSalle and great. Those were the days. And now, here is your host for the evening, the creator of All in the Family, Norman Lear. Good evening and welcome to our 200th birthday celebration of All in the Family. There's an ancient Greek definition of happiness. It goes, happiness is the exercise of your vital abilities along lines of excellence in a life that affords them scope. Tonight I represent 60 or more very happy people, writers, producers, actors, directors, staff and crew, who since our debut in January 1971 have been exercising their vital abilities communicating with you, reaching further and further to touch your funny bone, your emotions, not always succeeding, but reaching in a world that afforded us the scope. Now you viewers provided us with that world, that scope, because All in the Family was anything but a success when it began. But 15 weeks into our run, you discovered it, and you are the reason we're here tonight. We'd like to have invited all 50 or 60 million of you to share this moment with us, but the Bonaventure Hotel in Los Angeles was a little uptight about taking that many reservations. <laughs> so what we did instead was to invite 100 couples, and there they are, from 48 states in the nation. They flew here from Tennessee and Iowa and Maine and Florida, from Kentucky and Arizona, Colorado and New York. The other half of the giant collaboration known as All in the Family, our audience. No, no, I'm applauding you. I, I really just wanted to applaud you. <laughs> Behind me, as I conclude this very sentence, you will see Archie and Edith in bed. There they are. Archie and Edith in bed. Not a big deal, granted. But married folk, even a handful of unmarried folk, have been sleeping together since the dawn of time. Before January 1971, television comedy didn't reflect that fact. Anyway, as we mulled over 200 episodes, there were a thousand ways to begin to discuss them. We settled for the simplest. Archie and Edith in one of our very favorite scenes. Yeah. All right. Uh, 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 eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Uh, you know, it's been a, a long, kind of nervous day. And, uh, so, uh, what do you say we uh, just, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll put the paper down, and then you just go over there, way over there. <laughs> we just go see me by, huh? Tonight? But remember, whatever happens, I love you. I love you. <laughs> Uh, truly. <laughs> I love you truly, truly. My wedded Hey, 
Come on, darling. Listen, I know you're singing, and you know you're singing, but the neighbors are liable to think I'm torturing you. Tell you the truth, Edith. Uh, I, I ain't myself. You know. Well, yeah, well, what I mean is, uh, uh, let's not start something that, that I can't finish. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> between laughter and tears. We humans are fragile and we're foolish. So the humor in life doesn't cease when we are suffering any more than it stops being serious when we are laughing the hardest. That's why from the very beginning, all in the family chose to deal with human problems that concern us all. Ma, something's wrong, I know you. Around here, think they know me. Remember, Gloria, deep waters run very still. <laughs> but you already know me a lot longer than you have, so don't go around saying you know me. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. I got a lump in my breast. What did you just say? I got a lump oh, in it. That's the first time I said it out loud. What was it you wanted to ask me? <laughs> I'm afraid if I have this operation, Archie won't think of me in the same way. Oh, Edith, stop scaring yourself. Archie loves you and nothing's gonna change that. But I'm going to change a lot. Listen, even if you have to have the operation, it's still going to be all right. Believe me. You don't know. That's just the point, Edith. I do know. I know. You mean you? Six years ago. And you see how Frank and I get along? It hasn't made one bit of difference in our marriage. Don't bother looking, Edith. I, I wasn't. You coming home tomorrow morning? Yeah. Edith, they told me you had cancer. I thought I did too, Archie, but it was just a little cyst. And the surgeon got rid of you just like that. Oh. So what are you laying here for? Well, when they told me everything was all right, I got so excited, I jumped off the examining table and I broke my ankle. What are you going to do to me? Just exactly what you think I'm going to do to you. No, you will not do it. No, 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 you will not. Ah! Ah! Oh, knock it off. Knock it off. All right. Just stay quiet, okay? What are you going to do? You ain't taking off your clothes, are you? Yeah. Then I'm going to take yours off. Wouldn't you like a cup of coffee? <laughs> I don't drink coffee. I got stanker. 
<laughs> Lady, you're stalling. It ain't gonna do you any good. Now, this is gonna happen. So just relax, okay? Oh, listen, I gotta get out of here. See, I gotta get ready for my birthday party. <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Couldn't we do this without kissing? Yeah, yeah, okay. But you're gonna change your mind. Well, there's something burning in the kitchen. What is it? It's in the kitchen. All right, all right, come on, come on, come on. There's something burning in the kitchen. Oh, there's a fire! Fire! But... Oh, my birthday cake! My birthday cake is burning! Lady, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Oh. Oh. Liberty Mutual. Oh, yeah, now I see what your idea of a free country is. You're free to say anything you want, but if, but if anyone disagrees with you, they're either thrown into jail or called to meet it, right? That's right, because this is America land that I love. Oh, I love it too, Mr. Bunker. And it's because I do like protest when I think things are wrong. And stand beside her. And guide her. The, the, the right to the state is the principle of which this country was based. With the light from above. Listen to me. It's in the Bill of Rights. From the mountains. Why do you think we broke away from England to begin with, huh? Because we didn't agree with them. We demanded freedom. Why would vote? Yes, I thank you. I thank you. What all this reason? Bless. I mean, you're not listening to me. Right, you're right, totally right, closed right, 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 Seven years ago, in September of 1972, the cover story of Time magazine showed a photograph of Archie Bunker, Fred Sanford, and Maud. And the banner headline above them read, The New TV Season, Toppling Old Taboos. Inside, the article recalled the time, not too many years before, when Jack Parr walked off The Tonight Show because NBC had edited out one line, a reference to the initials WC, meaning water closet the British expression for toilet. They also recalled the time in 1968 when Petula Clark momentarily rested her white hand on the black arm of guest star Harry Belafonte in a TV special that they were doing, and a major automobile company struggled for weeks to have the moment cut out of the broadcast. Time magazine went on to say, that was the way it was on network entertainment shows. Blacks were visible but untouchable, and bathrooms simply did not exist. By and large, any subjects were fair game, except those that bore on the reality of viewers' lives. End of quote. There's Archie and Mike. They argued about everything that bore on the reality of their lives. A conservative has been described as a man with two perfectly good legs who has never learned to walk forward. <laughs> and a liberal, a person whose interests don't happen to be at stake at the moment. <laughs> As Archie and Mike debated the issues, we tried to keep the political arguments as even-handed as those descriptions. We tried, but being human, we make no claim to having totally succeeded. I still got faith in Nixon. Which one? What do you mean, which one? The Nixon who knew why we should be in Vietnam? Yes. The Nixon who knew all the reasons we had to be friends with Russia and China? Yes. The Nixon who knew all the secret reasons we had to keep bombing Cambodia? That damn right. The Nixon who didn't know a single thing about Watergate? What? I can't, I can't. Archie, what are you, what are you going to stop with this commie jazz? It's all over, Arch. The Red Scare's kaput. Nixon's going to Peking, remember? Hold it, buddy. He ain't there yet. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Five presidents have been warning us for the last 25 years against them red chinks. <laughs> now, nobody's going to tell me that the signals is off now and a billion enemies is now our friends. Oh, no, Mr. Nixon has got something up to sleeve. <laughs> yeah, like recommending they be admitted to the U.N. 
Oh, that'd be the day. When this country sits down with a nation of chink ping pong players, I don't believe <laughs> Those fireside chats kept this country informed. And one, my friends, from Roosevelt was worth a barrel full of, let me make this perfectly clear. Oh. Now you're wrapping my president, huh? Well, let me tell you one thing about Richard E. Nixon. <laughs> he knows how to keep his wife at home. Roosevelt could never do that with Eleanor. She was always out on the loose, running around with the colors, <laughs> telling them they was getting the short end of the stick. She was the one that discovered the colors in this country. We never knew they was there. Well, don't blame the college kids. Put the blame for unemployment where it belongs, right at the White House door. Well, don't blame President Ford, will you? The man's doing a hell of a job for a guy nobody voted for. <laughs> on TV. Oh, I get it, I get it. When you thought he was talking about VD and a permissive society, he was smart, huh? You find out he's talking about gun control, he's a jerk? That's right, and I'm gonna prove it to you. How many people in this U.S. of A would like to have guns? Too many, thousands. But how many people would like to have VD? <laughs> Here's a poor man out in California. He's out of a job. He's got that big house to maintain at San Clemency. <laughs> people in this country, huh, Ford promised, no more secrets, no more surprises. What does he do? He turns around and pardons Nixon. He done that under direct orders, buddy boy. From who? God. <laughs> you want to watch the election returns. You care more about a lousy movie than you do a presidential election? Certainly. Why do I care about something I know how it's going to come out? Everybody know how it's going to come out, including them McGovern people. See them on the newsreels with all the worried looks on their faces? <laughs> Not the Nixons. Seen a picture of Pat in the paper today? She was all smiles. Yeah, well, maybe she won't be smiling tomorrow. Yes, she will, buddy boy, because when she wakes up tomorrow morning, she knows she's been sleeping with the president of the U.S. of A. <laughs> is she going to McGovern's place or is he going to hers? Robert Frost said the middle of the road is where the white line is, and that's the worst place to drive. There were no middle of the roaders at the bunkers, and we've come in for our share of criticism about that. Some people feel that neither the characters nor the show had a right to express a point of view. Well, throughout the 50s and 60s, there were dozens of television comedies in which there were no topical references, no political discussions, no mention of a current event, and we've often thought, by the very omission of all reality, those programs were expressing a point of view, too. They were telling us you have no problem between the races. There is no inflation, no such thing as recession, no unemployment. There are no problems with the poor or the elderly. Women are not seeking equality, and we are not in trouble in Vietnam. To us, the omission of all social awareness on the TV comedies of the 50s and 60s just might have expressed a stronger point of view than any subject we may have touched in eight and a half years. And speaking of Vietnam, as Archie and Mike wrestled with the problem, so did the rest of us. Not that Archie faced his feelings about Vietnam voluntarily. He met them head on at his own dinner table. It was Christmas, 1977. I like that pinky, how he got a draft dodger here, writes a snotty letter to the commander in chief. <laughs> I mean, what the hell do you do with that? Look, Mr. Bunker, I don't want to spoil your Christmas dinner, so maybe I should go. Oh, no, no, Daddy, don't let me go. Don't make go. it all. He certainly has got to go. What are you talking about? <laughs> the FBI was to find him here. We could all be having Christmas dinner in a who's gal. Daddy, it's Christmas Eve. Now, don't go making a big crisis. Sure. Look, Arch, what David did took a lot of guts. Do My own father doesn't guts. understand. Why should he? When the hell are you it. going to admit that the war was wrong? I ain't talking about that war. I don't want to talk about that rotten damn one no more. I'm talking about something else. And what he done was wrong. Saying he won't go. What, do you think the whole people of this country can say whether or not they want to go to war? You couldn't get a decent war off the ground that way. <laughs> All the young people would say no. Sure they would. Because they don't want to get killed. And that's why we leave it to the Congress, because 
them old crocs ain't gonna get killed. <laughs> and they're gonna do the right thing and get behind the president and vote yes. Gus, if my opinion is of any importance... Certainly sir. your opinion is important. A gold star father. Your opinion is more important than anybody else in this room, and I want to hear that opinion. I, I want these young people here to hear that opinion. Now, you tell them, Pinky, you tell them. I understand how you feel, Arch. My kid hated the war, too. But he did what he thought he had to do. And David here did what he thought he had to do. But David's alive to share Christmas dinner with us. And if Steve were here, he'd want to sit down with him. And that's what I want to do. Merry Christmas, David. Merry Christmas, sir. No, 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 no. Archie, please, sit down and eat. No, no, no. But, Archie, it's Christmas. I can't. I, I gotta work this out, either. I, I can't think about that. But, Archie, you ask Pinky what to do, and you see what he's doing? You ought to do the same. Come on. There's a drumstick for you. Oh, eat it. I, I ain't thinking about it. I'll take it, Ma. Leave it on the plate. <laughs> Nice Christmas dinner here. So you might as well eat it. I, I'll tell you one thing. When the dinner's over, I still gotta wake this out. You better remind me to do that, Edith. Oh. <laughs> I will. This is Edith Bunker, 704 Houser Street. Would you please call us as soon as you can? Because my husband... <laughs> Hello, Dr. Shapiro. Edith Bunker, 704 Houser Street. Would you please call us as soon as you can? Because my husband, Archie Bunker, thinks he got infectious habit... <laughs> When it beats, but they don't give you enough time between beats. <laughs> Who else but Edith Bunker would try to make peace with a telephone answering machine? George Bernard Shaw once said that Christianity might be a good thing if anyone ever tried it. Well, Edith has tried it. Edith Bunker lives it. Is it my deal? Now, wait a minute. Forget the deal. <laughs> you don't play that bad. You give me this ten of spades on purpose. I did? Yeah, you did. Now, why'd you do that? Well, Archie, I thought it would make you feel better if I let you win. What? <laughs> That will be the day when I got to win by you letting me win. I was winning here before you let me win. You know what you've done now? You spoil the game. I don't want to play with you no more. You want to do something together? Do something together by yourself. Oh, gee. I'm sorry. I thought I was doing a good thing. Oh, 
sure, good thing. That's you all over. We're always doing good. You did the good. You never get mad at nobody. You never holler at nobody. You never swear. No nothing. You're like a saint. Edith. You think it's fun living with a saint? It ain't. It ain't at all. Look at this. You you don't even cheat to win. You cheat to lose. I mean, Edith, you ain't human. That's a terrible thing to say. I'm just as human as you are. Prove you're just as human as me. Do something rotten. <laughs> that ain't good. You're right, you ain't human. I am so human. How can you say I'm not after 23 years of marriage? How can you stand there and say I'm not human? Oh, gee, now you're going to cry. I can't help it. That was a terrible thing to say. I can't stand here and fight with you if you're going to cry. I can't help it. Oh, you say you're sorry and I'll stop crying. be the same between us if you don't say you're sorry. Are you going to stop crying? I can't. Then that's it. Oh, I'm sorry. You're going to go out. Oh, please, say you're sorry. I'll give you one more chance to stop crying. You're going to stop? Oh, I ain't got no secret. Archie and me still has fights, but we don't let them go on too long. Somebody always says, I'm sorry, and Archie always says, that's okay. <laughs> and then we forget it. No, Edith, that's not what I mean. I mean, you must be doing something right when you go to bed at night. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing more? Well, nothing more than we've been doing since the minister said we could. But, Edith, do, do you see pinwheels and skyrockets and fireworks like the 4th of July? With me and Archie, it's more like Thanksgiving. <laughs> she a present for me? Certainly, open it up. Oh, face prize. <laughs> oh, Archie. <laughs> Drugstore was the only giant open this time of night. Thank you. You like it? Who wouldn't? Well, what about you two? What happened on your first day? I may believe you don't. Oh, I'll never forget. Yeah. I was at the Puritan made ice cream. Well, don't make it a long story. Oh, you, yeah. Me and my cousin Maud. Maud. Was, one of their specials. It was called a steamboat. Oh, it was so delicious. Five different flavors. And Archie was sitting at another table with that fellow Jefferson Pratt. Remember him? Anyway, Archie was trying to get my attention. So first he put two straws in his mouth like a wolf. You want to, Archie. Come on. Tell me, where would you like to take me? Well, I would like to take you out to the kitchen and introduce you to some pots and pans. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. You don't want to take me with you when you go out 
because you want to get away from me. Oh, Ada. Is that right? Please. Ain't that the truth? Ain't it. It's the truth. Ain't it, Archie? Hey, hey, oh, you want the truth? I'll tell you the truth. The truth is, that's the truth. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. Uh. But I eat it. I said sometimes. I said sometimes there. Don't go falling apart on me, will you? We're married 27 years, there. Don't mess around with a perfect marriage. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm going out. Idiot, what are you talking about? Where are you going along? See, Archie, I gotta get away from you tonight. Oh, hey, hey, hey. I asked you where you was going. Where are you going? I'm going where the action is. <laughs> It's Buck Darling's Greatest Hits. Let's try Slimy River Bottom. It's a real hootin' Andy on The Andy Griffith Show, weeknights at 8, 7 Central. Thank God, thank God, thanks. You're okay in my book. <laughs> no, really, Edith. No, we got to have a little thankfulness oh, around here, you know? Yeah. Hey, hey, church on Sunday, huh? Oh, Archie, that would be nice. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll even go with you. <laughs> that Archie never went to church very much, never kept him from his own interpretation of the Bible. Of course, people have been interpreting the Bible for their own purposes for centuries, but none of them could have done so with any more passion or any more convolution than A. Bunker from the vicinity of his chair at 704 Hauser Street, Queens. Let me tell you something. When the missionaries went into the darkest Africa to bring God to the natives, you think they asked their permission? Like hell, he dragged them out of the trees and right down to the river. <laughs> and they held them under there until they seen the light. <laughs> hey, the natives was glad about that because that's the way they found God. And then later on, when they were chained in the bottom of slave ships, why, they was happy because they had somebody to pray to them. <laughs> Which proves that for everybody's own good, you gotta use force. That's the Christian way. <laughs> Edith, do you know where God sends people who dare go against his will? Me! To hell, hell, hell! <laughs> now, Edith, he sent down plagues on you, Edith. Thousands of birds like he put on to Job there. And locusts there to rip up your lawn and eat your hedges there. He sent down hailstones as big as baseballs to bust your roof out there. He could ram you into the belly of a whale. If God gets sore enough at you, Edith, he could turn your jawbone into an ass. If God had meant man to fight, why didn't he put guns in the Garden of Eden? Well, who the hell is Adam going to shoot, Eve? <laughs> Well, why is he gonna do that anyway? Because she's gotta help him populate the world and make his breakfast food. <laughs> and when the world gets population enough, they got enough people in the world to make armies, then God sent down a way that they could invent a gun. <laughs> and I think that uh, German preacher Martin Luger made the first one. I swear I think you do these things sometimes just to eat my heart out. And that's what you do, you know. Little by little, Piece by piece, you eat my heart out. I don't care. <laughs> well, you're not going to get away with this. What are you going to do about it? This. What again, what again, what again, what again, what again, what again? Oh, oh, God damn it! <laughs> what happened here? You shouldn't swear like that. Oh, you shouldn't swear, swear like that. I did. You swore. swore. You I swore. did not like it. <laughs> G.D. this and G.D. that. That ain't swearing either, G.D. The first word there is God, ain't it? How can that be a swear word, the most popular word in the Bible? <laughs> the second word, that's damn, that's a perfectly good word. You hear that all the time, like uh, they damn the river to keep it from flooding, see? <laughs> and even in the Bible, you read where some guy is damned for, for cheating or stealing or committing insects in the family. <laughs> 
and who's damned it? Who else? God! God damned him! He did beautiful ways right out of the holy book. Don't show you me. <laughs> Archie could use the Bible to rationalize his poorest behavior. Nothing new in that. Nothing new in using the Bible to rationalize bigotry either. Has the presence on television of Archie Bunker, the bigot, helped to assuage the problem of bigotry in our society? Or has it reinforced it? The question has been raised often, and we don't know the answer. But we're convinced that part of it rests in how smart we perceive the American people to be. The social critic, H.L. Mencken, may have done us a great harm when he quipped, no one ever lost money underestimating the intelligence of the American people. I think we're all losers every time our leaders believe that. Anyway, however much we may laugh at the way Archie expresses his outrageous prejudices, and however lovable he may be in other respects, we are content that the American people know very well that Archie Bunker, the bigot, is basically a horse's ass. <laughs> you telling me the Pope gets a kickback on chain letters? <laughs> I didn't say that, but figure it out yourself. He lives in a big polish, don't he? He's got about a thousand dollars worth of paintings on a ceiling alone. <laughs> got a ring bigger than Elizabeth Taylor's. <laughs> and he dresses better than Jackie Manassas. <laughs> You don't pay for all that stuff selling meatballs. Oh, no, I'm going to sue that guy. First thing in the morning, I had to get myself a good Jew lawyer. Archie, do you always have to label people? Why can't you just get a lawyer? Why does that have to be a Jewish lawyer? Because we're not going to sue a neighbor, I'm going to get a guy that's full of hate. Because a guy is sensitive and, and, and he's an intellectual and he wears glasses, you make him out a queer. I never said a guy who wears glasses is a queer. A guy who wears glasses is a four eyes. A guy who's a fag is a queer. I be Paul Chicanos, all right? Oh, who cares? What's in the name, anyhow, huh? In my day, nobody went around calling himself Chicanos, Mexican Americans, Afro Americans. We was all Americans. After that, if a guy was a jig or a spick, it was his own business. <laughs> His wife Ramona told him. And she got it straight from their own doctor, a regular white guy. <laughs> Nothing personal, I mean, you understand me. Oh, sure, I understand you. Yeah. Them white doctors, they sure knows this stuff. <laughs> Boy, that Marcus Welby, he must make 15 million house calls a week. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Where does Archie's prejudice come from? Where does anyone's prejudice come from? Oscar Hammerstein told us, you've got to be carefully taught. Archie and Mike were stuck one night in the storeroom at Archie's bar. It was cold, and they had been drinking. So I couldn't go to school with only one shoe, see. But my mother, she found a boot, so I had a shoe on one foot there and a boot on the other. A shoe and a boot, shoe boot. So the kids call me Shoe Booty. <laughs> kids all made funny, huh? Yeah, they all made funny. Well, all except one little black kid by the name of Winston. A black kid liked you? No, the black kid beat the hell out of me. <laughs> Why? I, I don't know, I'm not much. Well, he must have had a reason. Well, he said that I said he was... <laughs> well, did you? Sure. <laughs> well, then that was the reason. <laughs> what the hell reason was that? That's what all them people was calling them days. Uh. I mean, everybody we knew called them people. That's all my old man ever called him there. Yeah. Did you ever think that, that possibly your, your, your father just might be wrong? So wrong my old man? Don't be stupid. My old man, let me tell you about him, he was never wrong about nothing. Yes, he was, Arch. I, 
far hoe mee je, hoe lang je vader, de breadwinner in de huis daar, een man who goes out, een bus's bad to keep a roof over je head, a clothes on your back, you call your father wrong, hey, hey, your father, your father, that's the man that comes home, bringing you candy. Father is the first guy to throw baseball to you and take you for walks in the park, holding you by the hand. My father held me by the hand all the way. My father had a hand on him now, I tell you. He busted that hand once and he busted her on me. To teach me to do good. <laughs> My father, he shoved me in a closet for seven hours, teach me to do good. Cause he loved me. He loved me. Don't be looking at me. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You're supposed to love your father. Because your father loves you. But how can any man that loves you tell you anything that's wrong? You want to use some salt. 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 thing. Independent. I got this. Intelligent. I know where the proof is. Bold. What could go wrong? These women face the worst criminals have to offer, but with brains, got it, and brawn. Mm -hmm. They prove there's no case out of reach for the long arm of the law. Try me. Unforgettable, followed by Rizzoli and Dials. Every day, starting at 4 on Start TV. This, this is BTV, your home for memorable entertainment television. There was a time when all in the family could not be seen on television before 9 p.m. The network hierarchy wanted to protect children from its frank language, which could be heard, of course, any day on any school playground anywhere in the country. <laughs> children also needed protection, these executives thought, from the candid way we handled human sexuality. How much protection this afforded children, we don't know, since the very same shows were being run five times a week in the middle of the afternoon anyway. <laughs> We mention this not to berate the network, but to point up the schizophrenic attitude about sex that pervades our society, right up to and including some of the nation's most prominent executives. If they can't deal with it, what then should we expect from an Edith or Archie Bunker as they attempt to deal with the problems of human sexuality in their lives? Ma, did you ever wonder if Daddy stopped loving you? Oh, is that what's bothering you? You think your father don't love me? No, Ma. <laughs> no, Ma. It's not Daddy I'm thinking about. It's Michael. Michael? Why wouldn't Michael love me, no, Ma? <laughs> no, Ma. The problem's between Michael and me. 
Oh, well, what is it? <laughs> Ma, you know I can't tell you about a sexual problem. Sex? Yes. <laughs> Can I? <laughs> And if you have a problem about <laughs> something to do with one of those problems, you can tell me. <laughs> All right. It's Michael. You see, lately we've been apart. Why? Well, lately he hasn't been able to... <laughs> Tell you. Oh, Gloria, I'm sorry. It's crazy. The longer it goes on, the more worried he gets and the more guilty about himself and the more angry at me. Oh, well, don't worry. I'm sure it'll be all right. I have a call into Dr. Kermit. Maybe he'll know what's wrong. Oh, sure. He'll know. It's probably just something that's going around. <laughs> the problem with them, too? Well, Archie, I don't know the whole story, but... Oh, I, I just can't tell you. You just don't like to hear about such things. I'd like to hear about everything that's going on in this house. Now, what kind of a problem have they got? Well... <laughs> it's sexual. Jeez. <laughs> No, I don't like to hear nothing about that there. You better hear about this, Archie. Well, all right, you can tell me. But start slow. <laughs> don't put in nothing extra, see? And I'll say stop when I know what it is. Well... You remember you once told me about a fella, Petey Simpson, who came back from the war. Stop, I know. <laughs> and, and he wasn't Stop. Any... Stop. Oh, no. Yeah, Gloria told me. And she was there. <laughs> I don't have a condition. I'm pregnant. Oh, don't say that. Can't you say you're expecting? She's pregnant. Sounds like you've done something. We did. <laughs> when I was a little girl and a woman was starting to show, they used to say she was expecting a bun from heaven, but of course everybody knew it was really a baby. Well, I wish we could get back to them days. What this world needs is a little more of that class. Well, here and before, when we talk about glorious condition now, we're just going to say she's, she's expected. Or in a family way? Or with child. How do you feel about knocked up? <laughs> Read a magazine. All right. uh. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't look at this one, Archie. Oh, read it, read it, read it. Your pants. 
on, you're a lady. I'm a registered nurse. Believe me, yours won't be my first. Drop them. You mean all the way down? Mr. Bunker, I have patients waiting out there. All right, all right, don't yell at me, huh? Jeez. I hate to say this, but a nice girl would shoot me through the shorts. They are shorts. I feel like a flasher. Don't be embarrassed, Mr. Bunker. To me, it's just another face in the crowd. Show. The Beverly Hillbillies, Green Acres, Hogan's Heroes, Good. and Carol. Carol Burnett. I'm so glad we had this time together. Weeknights starting at 6, 5 Central on MeTV. I brought in a chick out, will you tell her? <laughs> I will not. <laughs> All right, then you tell her that. You do that pretty good. I won't go to my mother. Why the hell not? You go to your father every chance you get. Only go to you when you go to me. Well, get a whole damn boat. A lot has been made of the decibel level on All in the Family. They shout too much. The complaint is legitimate, unless you happen to come from a family who lives at the top of their lungs and the ends of their nerves. Those of you who do know such a family might agree that the unbridled passion of the bunkers and the stivics is more than just loud. It is also a, a celebration of life. But don't let me talk you into it. That's just, just the way we feel. Gloria, Gloria, just because I want to show you my love, that doesn't mean that you have to go and get pregnant. What do you mean, me? Ow! Do you think I can get pregnant all by myself? Ow! I'm tired of being the one that has to take all of the precautions. Ow! Why don't you do something about for a change? Because it doesn't work if I take the pill! There are other methods! Gloria, you know that you hate male contraceptives as much as I do. Now, I know it's not fair for the woman to take all the precautions, but that's the way things are. You were born with all the parts that need protection. Yeah, because you were born with all the parts we need protection from. Don't hurt me. What the hell is going on here? Now, I am sorry, but I have had it. I have no more remembering to take the pill, no IUDs, no nothing. From now on, it is up to you, Buster. Up to me? Yeah. If you're the one that's so gung-ho about not bringing any more children in this world, then do something about it. Get a vasectomy. Oh, Archie, how was your day? <laughs> Question? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Would it make you feel any better if I told you that today is Henry Mancini's birthday? <laughs> 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 oh, hello, Gloria. How was your day at work? Lousy, Ma. I'm 
telling you it's a city full of weirdos out there. <laughs> I got to be standing right next to a groper. He made me feel like a fresh loaf of Wonder Bread. Oh, my. I tell you, the only good thing about getting on a bus nowadays is knowing that you're getting off again. Hold it, hold it there, little girl. I can hear them complaints all the way up in the toilet. Listen, you ain't been working long enough to know. But when you come home at the end of the day, you're supposed to leave your troubles outside the door. Well, you come in with a cheerful wife and a smile. Don't be bringing your burdens in here and dumping them on your mother. Will you get supper on the table? <laughs> give me, give me that. <laughs> oh, ain't that lovely? <laughs> give me that. Give me, give me. Oh, 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 oh. Where did you learn a low-class dodge like that? <laughs> George, <laughs> Betty Davis done it, and Joan Crawford, Cordette Kobe, and Loretta Young, they all done this. <laughs> they all did this. Well, Clark Gable and Spencer Tracy and Tyrone Power and Archie Bunker all done this. <laughs> give me that. Give me, give me that. Exhale, inhale, swallow, push. Here it two, is. Three, Here it is. Four. The five. head is coming. The head is coming. Now Six, take it nice and easy. Seven, eight. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I had a girl. Okay. I had a girl. Okay. Now keep one, pushing. Two, three. You're like stepping four. on the accelerator of a car. I don't drive. <laughs> keep, keep pushing. You hear that? You hear what she said? She said she doesn't drive. She's sitting here panting and pushing and she's making jokes. Isn't she terrific? She's terrific. You're terrific, honey. You're just terrific. Isn't she terrific? She's terrific. Keep calm, Mr. Stivic. We haven't lost a father yet. Uh, you hear what she said, honey? We haven't lost a father yet. Isn't she terrific? Everybody's terrific. The whole thing's terrific. You're doing fine. Fine. Now stop pushing. Okay. And look stop at the pushing. mirror. Just blow, honey. Just blow. Don't push. Blow. Now the head is coming. Here's the head. Beautiful. Beautiful. Is it a boy or a girl? I can't tell from just the ears. <laughs> Gloria, Gloria, just one more little push. One little push, honey. One little push. You have a son. We have a son. A healthy son. We have a son. Christmas bells are ringing for the Bunkers with holiday-themed episodes of All in the Family. Next Sunday, starting at 8, 7 Central, part of a very merry MeTV. This is... Independent. I got this. Intelligent. I know where the proof is. Bold. What could go wrong? These women face the worst criminals have to offer, but with brains... Got it. ...and brawn... Mm -hmm. ...they prove there's no case out of reach for the long arm of the law... Try me. Unforgettable, followed by Rizzoli and Dials. Every day, starting at 4 on Start TV. Mr. Archie Bunker? Who is it, Edith? Oh. Uh, just a minute. It sounds like the operator. It's for Mr. Archie Bunker. <laughs> what is it, long distance call? That's what it sounds like. <coughs> Hello. 
Is that your bunker here? Yeah. Huh? Will I hold for Eddie Frazier? Sure I'll hold for Eddie Frazier. Hey, Edith, it's Eddie Frazier. He must be calling me from the coast to find out if... <coughs> Hello? Yeah, I'm holding. Here, Edith, you take this thing. Keep the line alive, will you? He's calling me from California. Guy worth $35 million. <laughs> Another call. The toilet flush. I guess nothing we have done on All in the Family has offended some people more than our occasional use of bathroom humor. We never did it to offend. We did it because we found it funny and dear. The very first laugh that a parent shares with a child probably has something to do with the child's toilet training. You remember? So we have never understood why such sweet shared moments should lose any of their sweetness when we laugh at them together as grown-ups. There we go. Now we get it up here. Now we get it up. It's okay. It's okay. Take a minute. There we go. There. Now we get it all together here. Now, I'll be right with you now. Don't move. Okay, okay. I ain't leaving you now. Here we are. This is gonna feel good. We give you more white doors. We want it to take it easy, take it easy. We give you more white doors. They're nice and clean there. Eh? And uh, and then we uh, yeah. Uh, we got a dye comet for you now. Okay. That's a nice clean one. Take it easy there. Yeah. There you have it. Our critics knew that all in the family would finally come to this one day. Frontal nudity. <laughs> Actually, when the network first saw the script that called for this scene, they did come to us with the problem. They wanted to be sure that when Archie diapered the baby, we cut about here, so that his hands and the infant's parts were out of camera range. We asked why, and the individual that came to us laughed, and he said, come on, you know why you can't do that on television. <laughs> There's going to be a tremendous knee-jerk reaction in the middle of the country. It's always the, the middle of the country that won't understand, they say. But the middle of the country survived that shot, and not one state seceded from the Union. <laughs> all of this raises an important question for all of us, however. Do we want television to be free enough to provoke and stimulate and irritate and even offend us sometimes? Or do we want such freedom declared a misuse of the medium and thereby lose the opportunity to share, either with delight or dismay, such real moments as the one taking place behind me? Before we bring out the stars of All in the Family, we'd like to close as we began with one of our very favorite scenes. I love you, Gloria. I 
Hey. I love you, Daddy. Well, your daddy certainly loves you, little girl. Taxi meet is running out there, you know. You, you, you better call them two out of the kitchen, huh? Yeah, you better do that. Michael, the cab driver's honking. Okay, honey. You want to take Joey? Go, Joey. Go, Joey. Go, Joey. Goodbye, say goodbye Joey. to Grandma. Quick, say goodbye to Grandma. So long, Joe. Oh, no, so long, Joe. Goodbye. So long, Joe. Grandma, I love you. <laughs> I love you, Mike. I love you, Mom. <laughs> hey, the taxi meet is running on there, you know. It's got to be at least a $15 ride out there. You don't want to add to it, you know. No use in doing that. They charge you enough of them rides. <laughs> Goodbye, Joe. Goodbye, Mike. Goodbye. Oh, hey, uh, listen, have a good trip there, huh? Have a good trip. Oh, yeah. 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 I know you always thought I hated you. Oh. But I love you. Hey, uh, you'll be sure and send uh, postcards every now and then, will you? Of course, your mother-in-law, she's, she's going to... She's going to want to know that you're all right. You know? Well, oh, it's a good sky. Uh, take off and have a, a good trip. Yeah. Bye, Arch. Starting at 6 5 Central on Me TV. I. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight and a half years and 200 episodes, Miss Sally Struthers, six months pregnant.
And now, let's join the after-show party in the Founders Circle at the Music Center's Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. Philharmonic for their gracious cooperation. Production assistance and financial consideration provided by the Los Angeles Bonaventure. For the 200th episode celebration of All in the Family, this is Dick Tufeld speaking. Thank you for joining us. Our celebration of legendary television pioneer Norman Lear 